Stroke timing. What is it? Why is it important? And how do we improve it? Let's dig in. All right, stroke timing. So what is it? What is stroke timing? You've probably heard someone say, oh, he has good timing, or he hits that ball well because he's good at timing, or uh, to hit a draw shot, to draw your ball really well, you need really good timing. So what is it? Uh, to be honest, I think timing is kind of the wrong word. I don't know why we use it. it I, I get it, but I also don't get it. I'll explain what timing is. So timing, simply put, is just accelerating through the cue ball. Or your max velocity as you stroke through the ball is happens right as you get through the ball. So you're hitting the ball, and by the time you've the ball has been released, you're at your max velocity for that shot. In other words, you don't decelerate, you accelerate through the ball, and then you can go for it. And really, why it's important is a lot of shots are missed because of bad timing. A lot of people decelerate on their stroke, and what that does is A, you might uh, swerve your stroke, you might not hit the center of the cue ball because you've decelerated or you've dogged a stroke. Uh, other, the other thing that it does and you won't see this with the naked eye, but if you watch in slow motion, as the cue ball hits the object ball, a lot of times you create this little tiny jump or skid on the balls where the object ball hops a little bit. And what you do is a lot of times you will undercut that ball. It will go right into the rail instead of cutting into the pocket. But you can't see it with the naked eye. You can really only see it in slow motion. So it's hard to really get a whole lot of feedback on if your, your timing is good or not. The best way to get feedback is trying a draw stroke. If you can zip the ball back, you have really good timing. If you don't, you probably have bad timing or you're decelerating before getting through the cue ball. So that's the best way to tell if you have good timing or not. The best players in the world all have great timing. You can tell by not only their draw strokes, but their cue ball, they have really good touch because they have really good timing. They're really getting through the ball. Even with soft strokes, they're getting through the ball at the max velocity. No matter how easy they're shooting the ball, they're accelerating through it. And what you'll see with those better players is they'll hit the ball, they'll aim kind of bad and the ball still goes in and you think, what, how did that go in? And then you think about all the times that you've shot the ball and you hit it really well and it still stayed up. So why? Timing. Probably follow through and timing. So but let's take a look at some ways to improve your timing. One of those ways is to make sure you pause. So you go through your this is what some people do. They get down, they do some practice strokes, and then they shoot the ball. It's hard to have good timing like that. What pretty much every great player, or even good player, on planet Earth does is they do a pause at the cue ball. They do their strokes. They lock it in. And then they shoot. Incorporating that pause at the cue ball really helps set your mind to not decelerate. Try it again. Practice strokes. Pause. You find your spot. And you get through the ball. Now, another way. Now, not all great players do this. Some do. Someone like Chris Melling does this really well, where they pause back here. And what I think that does is A, improves your timing, also helps with your follow through. If you don't follow through a lot, if you find yourself decelerating a lot, that pause in the back really seems to help. Show you that again. And what those pauses do is they stop you from being quick. You'll hear the commentators also say, he was quick on that shot and he missed it. What are they talking about? Same thing. Those pauses stop you from being quick. Quick means back. You go back too quick, and then you go forward too quick, and you end up jabbing the ball. So they pause at the ball, or pause at the back, and it stops you from being quick. Another thing to talk about is your elbow, the back elbow. To me, one of the most under-thought-about, under-talked-about things is the back elbow. Rarely hear it talked about, but I think it's so, so important. If you watch every great player on earth, 
their elbow, when they're down, is up high. A lot of times over their head, almost always over their head. Now, I'm a big guy. I have to get really low to get that elbow over my head. And I think, my personal opinion, is that most professional players get really low, their chin on the cue, so their elbow can be really high. I don't even think they mean to do that. I don't think that's their intention, but their elbow being high gives them a very efficient stroke. So let's just pretend that I am a uh, puppet and there's a puppet master up there with strings and controls my joints. So he's got a, a string on my elbow and a string on my wrist. Now let's just say he cuts that string on my wrist. What's gonna happen? Gravity pushes my hand through. Now, same scenario, I got an elbow low. Boom, now he lets go, it goes down here and just kind of stops. To get through, I have to muscle it through. But puppets don't have muscles. Up here, it naturally goes through. Down here, it really stops right there. So if you want to not decelerate, you want to get through the ball, my best advice, get that back elbow up as high as you can. And that helps with your, my fourth tip, follow through. <sighs> follow through is tough. Some people, including myself, have struggled with it. It's some, for some people, just not a natural thing. Now, if you think about a baseball player or baseball pitcher, they follow through. You think about a golfer, they follow through. Baseball bat, Ken Griffey Jr., follow through. Everyone has that follow through, right? Pool's no different. You gotta follow through. Now, some people drop their elbow, some people don't. Personal preference, a lot of the top Europeans drop their elbow. I think it probably works, but don't mess with it if you don't have to. If you don't feel it's gonna help you, but the follow through, you really get that timing going. You really start to see your timing get better if you really force that follow through. Even on short, even on soft shots, like let's say I wanna really shoot this in soft, I still need to follow through. I hope these help, I hope these tips help. They've helped me a lot, I've thought a lot about this, I've asked a lot of questions to a lot of top players, and I pay attention. I pay attention to all these little things and I take it back to the lab, and I'm like, oh, why is this, why is this? I've never heard anyone say that stuff about the elbow. But I, I, I'd put my, my uh, reputation on it, for whatever that's worth. I'd put my reputation on it, that that is why it's so efficient when it's so high. All the top players have a high elbow, it's very efficient. And it helps with your timing. Please give these a try, hope it helps, take care.